Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to Wood by Wright 2. Today we are making wooden screw clamps. Not only are we actually making wooden screw clamps, but we're also going to be making the metal version as well that you can get a kit for that. Now I'll be leaving a link to the kit down below. This particular kit was actually sent to me by a fan of the channel, so thank you for that. Um, and I'll be sending this back to him to say thank you for providing that so we can make this video. Now if you don't know what a wooden screw clamp is, I have a video that just came out on that on the main channel. I'll leave a link to that down below. Uh, it is a very useful tool that used to be incredibly common, but nowadays people haven't uh, found them as much. And once you get to know these tools, they become uh, indispensable in the shop. So today I want to look at how can we make one with wooden threads as well as how can we make one with metal threads. Let's dive in and take a look at this. We're going to work with some cherry. These are off cuts that I've had sitting in my shop for a long time. Scraps that were just too big to get rid of and nice big pieces of cherry. Uh, they actually came off of the chops for my leg vise. And so they're pieces that I cut off the bottom. First thing I want to do is cut it to the length I want and then smooth out one side and make sure that's a decent reference face. Now I want to make sure it's 90 degrees to one of the two edges or one of the two sides because it's going to end up being pretty close to square. I don't know if one's a side and one's an edge, but <laughs> we're, we're going to clean it up, make sure it's square and ready to go. Um, putting a little bit of wax in the plane actually allows it to slide a little bit better, especially with something like cherry or walnut that's a very um, closed grained, diffuse porous wood. It's a, it makes it a lot smoother and easier to work with. And we also want to square off one of the ends. This will be the butt of the jaw, so the large end of it. And I want to draw lines on the three edges, not the side with the bark, and make sure that I get a nice clean cut all the way down on it. Uh, now, originally I was planning on using this out of a different piece of wood that's a little larger so there wouldn't be any bark on it. But then when I was looking at these pieces a little closer, I realized that the bark really wouldn't be that much of a problem, and it might add a little bit of intrigue. So it was something to experiment with and play with. So I decided to keep it and work with it. You can see here I'm going to be slicing off some of the bark, and some of it's going to be staying. And then we can make some live edge hand screw clamps. <laughs> Interesting idea, and I, I always like experimenting and trying new things. So we're going to mark off the backside and mark out what we need to cut off for the, the actual shape of the chop. Now to make these, I'm just duplicating the well, one of the chops that I currently have. And I'm not going for anything particular, just eyeballing the, the shape and design. Uh, nothing is set in stone that it has to be one way or the other, just make it to the size. The next thing I want to do is drill the holes for the screws to go through. Now I have a particular tap and die set, I'll leave a link to those down below, but uh, for those you want to drill a hole that is smaller than the threads and you'll actually, it'll be dependent on your tap and die. I want to lay out where these holes are going to go into the chops. They're up two inches from the bottom and then centered in the jaws. And I want to drill through one and then just nick into the other one to leave a mark of where it is because the other one needs a larger hole in one and a smaller hole in the other. And so we're going to drill all the way through with this hole that will be threaded through one and then touch the other one on the other side. And that's why the two of them are lined up in the vise. I love it when you can get those long curls coming off of that. It just shows that the bit is good and sharp and a lot of fun to use. Now that we drilled through one, I'm going to drill a larger hole on the butt end of the other one, but it's only going to go in about an inch. This will allow the screw to spin um, so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually wiggle around. And then on the other one, we're going to drill a larger hole as well. Uh, but in this one, the hole is going to go all the way through because the screw needs to slide through one side of the jaw. So one side of the jaw gets a, a through hole that is larger and a larger hole that doesn't go all the way through on the bottom. And then the other one gets two threaded holes. Then before going any farther, we're just going to chamfer it all and make it look pretty and uh, detail it down. Uh, I decided to go with some very heavy chamfers here. Originally, I was planning on just knocking the corners off. But after doing a little bit larger chamfer, I thought it would work really well with the bark because then you get the, the 45 degree in there. Now for the dowels, I just got some one inch oak dowels. Uh, I would have preferred maple, but I had some oak on hand and it works pretty well. As long as you soak it in linseed oil overnight, uh, that will allow the, the fibers to soak up a lot of oil and you get a really nice cut then on the, uh, the, the dye. And this is a, a fun, it's a screw box. And one of these days I want to make a screw box. It's a really simple tool uh, once you understand it, but uh, you can see that <laughs> it, it'll just keep you on all day long, though it is really squeaky. <laughs> so we thread it all the way down and then take it off. And we actually, on, on both of them, we're gonna stop a little ways because we want to handle, it makes it easier to grip. 
I guess you don't have to, but you just have to hold the threads and it's not as comfortable. Now on one of them, it needs to have a stop on the handle. And the handle I wanted to make a little larger. So I got a chunk of two by two oak and bored out a hole that it would slide into. But cutting into end grain, even with a nice sharp bit, you've got to be really, really careful, especially with doing something large like this. Uh, I think it was a, it was a one inch uh, hole that had to be bored in four inches into the end grain of this oak. So not an easy process but with a good bit of force and a good tool, it works well. So once we drilled the hole four inches into this block, then we can cut it off. I probably only need to drill it two inches or so, but I wanted to sink it all the way down in rather than putting pins into it. Now that we have that on there, we can attach it to the handle of one of the screws that we threaded. So I'm gonna use some five minute epoxy, slather that in there, and the, the hole is actually a really nice tight fit. It would take a good bit of pounding to get it down. So the epoxy actually adds a little bit of lubrication to get it all the way down to the bottom and lock it in place that way. Now I let that sit for a little while and we can come back and shape it off. I use some dividers to mark out an even distance all the way around and that's what I'm gonna plane down to and use that as an octagonal reference. I can just use a scrub plane and come down close to the line, then come with a regular plane and smooth it out. Do that on all four sides and then rotate it 45 degrees and then do that on all four corners and we're left with an oct octagon. Chamfer the ends a little bit, and it's a really nice shaped handle with a lot of friction and really comfortable. Back to the other jaw that we need to tap the two holes. Here is the tap I'm using, and again, I'll leave a link to the tap and die set I have down below. Um, I use a little bit of linseed oil on there. makes it run in a little bit easier. You have to take it in uh, three quarters or so and then back it out as the grooves fill up with wood. Clean out the grooves, and then you can grind it back in. It is a bit of a workout, but it is really surprising how good they are. Run, run through to make sure that everything's smooth and we have ourselves a functioning chop. Run the screws in, test them out, and if you've never tried a wooden screw, they are incredibly impressive how strong they actually are. They will do a, a good bit of work. So you can see how one side slides through one jaw and then threads into the other one. On the other one, it goes through the threading and then taps into the side that doesn't have the threading. So I left this one long so I could cut it off and bring it down to it. Now for it to slide in the hole on the other side, I took the threads off so that they wouldn't be binding inside the, the hole that I drilled. And you can see how it just sits on there and then will slide freely pushing the other side away. So now it can thread through one side and then stop into the, the hole on the other side. And then the first one, the one with the big handle, it'll slide through a hole and then thread into the other side. You can see how it mates up there with the, uh, the other chop. And now we have ourselves a functioning screw, hang, a screw clamp. Just like that, a lot of fun. There's one down, now we're gonna do one with the wooden bits. Eee, I could do that all day long. Okay, for this one we're gonna use uh, some, uh, we're gonna use some oak. I believe this is red oak cut off from my table. Some extra scraps on there. And uh, the dimensions for this actually come from the kit. It has a whole measurement dimension uh, for the sizes on it. This is for a six inch clamp. And I believe it was an inch and a quarter by an inch and three eighths, something around that that I had to cut it down to. So we planed two sides down at 90 degrees, and then we're able to mark off of those with a marking gauge and uh, lay out exactly where we need to cut it off. Slice it down lengthwise one way, mark it again, and then slice it down lengthwise the other way to bring it to the two dimensions that we need. And then once that's done, then we can cut the one end of the jaw to taper it down and make it look more like a hand screw clamp. And there you go. See the little taper on the end? It looks really pretty. <laughs> now we need to lay out for this. Now with the with the hardware, it's just a drilling a bunch of holes, basically. First thing I want to do is drill two holes that need to go through it that then the inserts can go into. And the plans lay out exactly where to put the holes. And I just draw out and trace them around, mark them out, and drill two holes that go all the way through. I drill through from one side until the lead screw pops out the other side, and then I back out and then drill from the other side so I get a really nice clean hole coming all the way through. Now these are where the two inserts go, but we need to have space for the threaded rod to go through, the bar, through each of these bars at 90 degrees. And those actually need to be angled mortises. So first I'm coming in with a smaller bit and drilling out into the middle. And this basically goes all the way through uh, at 90 degrees to the holes we just drilled. But we need to widen these holes that we're making right now so that the screw can swing side to side. I have a bevel gauge here I set to 15 degrees and I can lay that out on the, uh, the sides of these and that lets me know where I can come in and chop in. And we can lay out from there 
exactly how wide this needs to be. I can set up the mortise and gauge to the size of the hole and then lay that out to the lines at 15 degrees from the existing hole on the side. It's kind of confusing, but the, the plans make it fairly straightforward. And I'll leave a link to the plan, the, uh, the kits for these if you want to get them um, down below. They're, they're fairly, fairly easy. The one I have is actually an old version of the plans, um, and it's a little bit less easier to understand, but the new ones are a lot better. So now you can see we're chopping in at an angle, and this will allow the screw to go through the block into the insert, and it will allow it to move around a little bit. Speaking of which, now we can put in the inserts. And I don't know why the designs actually made the blocks um, not as wide as the inserts. I wish I could have redone that and made the blocks a little wider to match the insert. But alas, I did not. There we have a functioning screw clamp, except for there are no handles. Now the kits for these, they thread on. And it looks weird like I'm turning it off, but I'm actually turning it on because it's left-hand screws on one side and right-hand screws on the other. And then you have to drill a hole through the handle through the threaded rod and out the other side and then drive in a pin and that's how they hold in place. Um, sounds difficult but it's actually pretty straightforward. On this one the, the little ferrule popped off and so I drilled it mostly without the ferrule and then popped through the other side with the ferrule in place. And then drive in the little set pins and there you go. It is a functioning clamp. Now we just need to do some detail. I wish I had thought about this ahead of time and actually done the chamfering before putting the hardware on but I got a little excited and oh well I just have to do it afterwards. Now it's time for the finish, and ooh la la, I love cherry. Uh, cherry just comes to life when you put oil on it. And we're going to be using boiled linseed oil and paste wax. I use that for most all of my hand tools in the shop. It just feels good, it looks good, it's comfortable, and it's a, it's a good, simple finish. And if you apply it regularly, uh, you won't have any problem with glue sticking to these. Let it soak into the bark and heal it up. You can see the end grain of this cherry just soaks up the, uh, the oil, and I just keep giving it to in, until it stops soaking up. Um, sometimes I'll actually dunk it and let it set over, uh, overnight for a while and let it absorb as much as it wants. We wipe it on, let it sit for a while, and then come back and wipe it off. Uh, for the one with all the hardware, this cannot come apart now that the set, screw, the, the set pins are in there. I guess I could drive them out, uh, but it's more work than it's worth, so I just oil around everything and let it soak in. Once it is taken up as much as it'll take, then I can wipe off any of the excess. Let them sit for a little while, and then I'm going to wax them down. And rather than using a regular paste wax, I'm actually using a harder wax on these because I want it to build up and last on them a while, especially on the jaws, because then the glues that might be coming on them in the future will uh, rub off of that very easily. Then we can put it together and give them a test drive. And I was really, really happy with these. Uh, when I really cranked this one down, I was actually able to lift the bench up. Um, this one, uh, the, the oil was still a little bit wet on the handles, and I couldn't turn it down and wipe them off until I could get a good grip on them. Uh, but uh, a very good, useful clamp, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to giving away and using the other one in my shop for a while. So there you have it. I am, I like this. Uh, now, I really originally wasn't thinking that I would like the live edge on here because, well, it's just it's a clamp. It should be, you know, solid. And I know that a lot of people are going to say, ooh, that's going to make it weaker. No, there's, there's far more material here than it needs. And uh, so this is just kind of a, a fun way to have a, uh, have a live edge wooden screw clamp. <laughs> and I really like how this came out. Now on this side, I needed that stop so I can rotate this down and it locks up against the jaw. Um, so I did need to have a larger handle on this side. And if you want a larger handle on both sides, you can. But for me, I'd rather both of them being a little bit smaller. I like that feeling a little bit. But uh, this works really well. I like the octagonal feel. So for the metal version, um, I'll leave a link down below where you can find these particular kits. Uh, they are a lot of fun to put together and they go pretty quickly. Each side of this was probably about 30 minutes worth of work. Uh, so it's a, it's a relatively fast project and uh, you can make several of these in your shop. Especially if you have a drill press, it goes even faster because they're, they're really just drilling a series of holes and putting the hardware into it. Now, if you want to see more information about what a wooden screw clamp is and where they'd be used in a shop, uh, I have a link to that down below. I did a video on the main channel not too long ago where I went into a little more detail about how these clamps actually work. So I think that's about it for now. I am really liking these, and if you did like this, please let me know down below. Also, if you did like this, please like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, join, become a member on Patreon. There are so many things you can do to show your love for the channel, and thank you for that. That means a lot to me. So I think that's it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Dad joke time from the Dad Joke Book, and I do have a link to this down below if you want to see that. But what do you call an erratic photographer? Luke, you'll like this one. A loose cannon. Ha, ha, ha.